have you gotten to see the video of your goal? This is sort of a reaction type shot, it seemed like. Yeah, you know, as a, you know, as a reaction type shot, I, I kind of don't even know that, remember that, like me opening up my knee that much. Uh, I was pretty much more just trying to like kind of run into the ball, make sure, because I didn't want to bring my foot up to it because I didn't want to go up and I didn't want to bring my head down to it and like kind of lose sight of it because it was moving pretty fast. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to make sure I try and get some part of my leg on it and make sure I don't try and change my angle too much. And yeah, I ended up going in top, top corner. Sure. Had you previously thought about going and jumping in the crowd, like kind of a Lambo leap or like how'd that all come about? I never plan anything. Like I always plan something and it completely goes, you know, away right after I score. Um, like as soon as I heard the crowd, I just got, you know, I just went crazy in my head. I started running over and I kind of saw them kind of do this. I saw like two people, the same, like same section kind of come like this. I was like, sure. And as I'm looking at their stands, everybody's just so hyped up and hugging each other. It was a pretty, pretty cool moment. Have you ever ran up a wall like that before? No. I mean, maybe an obstacle course or a jungle gym when I was five, but since then it's been scarce. There's been some great Barrett goals and celebrations over you know last two seasons that you've been here. Do you have a favorite, or where does this last one rank? I like the fake hamstring and the teacup. The teacup ballerina and the fake hamstring were pretty good, but the teacup was a good one because it was uh, in Portland, uh, you know, kind of uh, a little salt in the moon. How does being a hero or, or even a goat kind of different in this age of, of sort of social media, maybe as opposed to at the beginning of your career? I mean, do you hear a lot on Twitter and all that? Does that kind of let things linger? Well, if I keep doing it, they're going to bring in the closer position in, in soccer. <laughs> but it's uh, <laughs> going to bring in the righty. No, it's um, not something you prepare for. You know, it's not something you practice. It's just something that you have to mentally be ready for. And that's, you know, the, that's the job. You know, I've been a starter. I've been a sub. I was a sub. I, I played this role a lot in the beginning years. And you know now I'm you know kind of back to it and like I said on this team it's you know understandable you got so many so much talent you know how does Ziggy find you know a spot on the field for you mm -hmm. um, but you know my job is to make it tough on him mm -hmm. and uh, I wasn't in the lineup to start but you know I was the next one and mm -hmm. Valdez got hurt so uh, you know my number was called and I was happy to answer. It seems like you get a lot of those right place, right time kind of goals. What is that mentality for you? Guys think it's an accident still? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's just prep. It's just IQ. It's just uh, I know where to be. I know where the ball is most likely to go because I've seen it a thousand times. You know, a ball might end up here. A ball might squirt here. If it's you know, it, you can't plan for deflections. But I know that if Brad gets his head on the ball, he's going to try and head it goalwards. And like I said, you know, afterwards, I didn't see anybody crashing from the back post. So that was just going to be my job. I was going to try and make sure I crashed at least one time. And and the one chance I picked, you know, it worked out. There's times in your career where if you, you'll make that run nine times and the tenth run you don't make, you don't get it. And then you're like, God, it's just one of those times, you know. And, you know, it's just one of those times I was right place, right time, right ball. And, you know, just, you know, perfect moment. What was the message from the coaching staff kind of in the days, I guess, the last day since then? Have you earned your spot back in the 18? I, you know, it's week to week with this team, you know, so it's, uh, we had to come out here, uh, we have two weeks of practice, you know, so much can happen, you know, people can go down injured, people can fall ill, you know, you saw what happened with Chad Marshall, such a freak accident, you know, so uh, my job is just to, you know, just keep my fitness for the next two weeks, um, do as much as I can to be ready, and, you know, just keep the same mindset, you know, and uh, it's going to be really good with this week off, and then we're going to come back in, and I think that everybody's going to have fresh legs and kind of a rejuvenated spirit, you know, and it, I think it was important for us not to go into this break with a loss at home to LA again. That would have been bad. So I think it was really good too for us to get a tie because it felt like, like Brad said, it felt like a win. How important is it to get a break at this point in time right before you have two matches to close out the season? It's just important to do it right before playoffs. You know, like we expect to get into playoffs. I mean, we're not saying Houston's a bad team or Salt Lake's a bad team, but that's our mindset. We're going to make playoffs. And, uh, you know, that's going to be that's going to be our goal. And that little break is you know people going home you can go see their family you can go wherever go hang out with friends whatever and that's just so important you know just have that little mental break right before you go into a, a tough stretch of games ziggy has been saying 51 points is what he thinks it'll take all season that would be well that's four points from where y'all are does that feel about right i mean i'm sure y'all are aiming for six but do you think a draw and a win gets it done uh, I mean, we don't know what gets it done. I mean, obviously, you want to finish with the highest seed you can possibly get, so we're going for six points. Mm -hmm. Put ourselves in the best possible mm -hmm. place we can. We've obviously left a lot of points on the table at a lot of different points during this season, but now we it's all these games are must-wins for us, I and mean, that's the way we're going to approach them. We're going to approach them each one as a win-or-go-home type thing, and, you know, when we do that, we come with the energy, our, our, our skill, and our talent normally take over, and, uh, you know, when we score early, hopefully we can start doing that again because uh, when we get down from behind it, you know, we've it's been tough for us this year tougher. I got one more for you. Um, back to the celebration on Sunday night. 
you've jumped into the crowd and you celebrated with your team and then you pushed yourself away and you had a nice bow kind of moment in like living in the what 56,000 people cheering for you for all of us who've never had 56,000 people cheer for us what does that feel like you know it was just uh you know i had i i guess i could probably say i had a tough you know tough thing you know i haven't been in the lineup in the 18 and stuff like that and you know that was a real exclamation point for me a real statement for me you know to say hey i belong in this 18 at least you know so uh I, you don't know when it's going to be your last, you know, chance, you know, so I was, just, to me, that was me soaking it up, you know, just kind of, you know, just reveling it with the fans and, you know, it's great to celebrate with those guys, you know, so, uh, you know, it was just, it was just that.